Let's see again. Flanks is gone. Got it. That's caught. That's caught. Down to the 21. There's another in the first. And he's still on his feet. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Welcome everyone to SFL Crunch Time. I'm Ethan Muslin. And I'm Josh Zirkel. The Cardiac Kids at Denver are at it again. Another close game, this time with the Arizona Scorpions. But first, let's go around the league and get you caught up on all the scores from SFL action in week six. Let's go! Why don't we take it from the top? North of the border, Florida visiting, visiting Vancouver. Charlie the Bullet Boletsky, shoot me, spins inside and runs outside for the score. He had another monster day over 150 yards, but Robert Redford, the natural, gets a big block, and he's on his way to the end zone. Vancouver got a huge win over Florida, 41 to 24, your final out of Canada. Meanwhile, in Texas, Fort Worth, this is Johnny Reno fighting a leaping Stephen Hacker, coming up with a huge catch, over 100 yards on the day for the Swiss Army Knight of the SFL, Stephen Hacker. And Jason Williams waited for his block, and he finds his way into the end zone. And Fort Worth waiting for their first win of the season for quite a while. They finally got it. 20 to 16, your final out of Fort Worth. Los Angeles facing Jacksonville. Robert Johnson refusing to be stymied by the Jacksonville defense. And he is off. LA got their groove back in this game. 45 to 16 over the Jacksonville Kings. London visiting DC, not a diplomatic visit. Kevin Say spinning and running into the end zone. Just another day at the office for the MVP candidate. No big deal. But London would answer. Johnny Pickler under center is going to unleash the dragon to Mike St. Green. And St. Green is off to the end zone. Over 100 yards receiving for St. Green. DC falls finally to London, 38-31. This is Ben Charms from Mexico City picking off Ace Fennec. And Mexico City would cash in. And Phoenix Jones on the swing pass. Mexico City needed overtime to get past Lone Star. 31-28, to your final south of the border. This is Corey Menner, who had a multiple interception day against the Mavericks. The air show finally went quietly to that good night. Keith Swearingen. Multiple touchdowns on the day, 30 to 23, your final out of Charleston, Tulsa, and St. Louis. A couple of young teams on the rise. This is Cameron Shaw coming up with a big pick in the end zone for Tulsa. Would lead Tulsa to this. A huge strike over the middle. Corey Jones and behind the entire defense. They're not going to catch him. And Tulsa comes up big on the road, 31 to 17. Your final under the arch. Las Vegas, Louisiana. This is Rolliman Hood. What kind of season is Rolliman Hood having right now? The interception and the big return to boot gets us into plus territory. And who else getting it done? Mike Ryan. When's the last time he played a game without getting an interception? And then look who else is in the action. Dante Grimm, who had two picks in this game. 33-21 to 21 over Las Vegas. And the first game on the docket today is the Western Division matchup between Arizona and Denver. Ryan Owens from 10 yards out gets the touchdown to give Arizona closer to the lead. They're trailing 27-23 later in the third quarter. Picked off here. That was Eric Price trying to get a pass, to, but Rashonda Gage gets in front of it, makes the pick, gives Arizona the ball back. Later on in their drive. Pass complete here to Ryan Owens. He gets the first down after a nice gain on that play. Then on second and goal, Ryan Owens again from the right side. He scores the touchdown. That would give the Scorpions the lead, 30 to 27. About a minute to go here in the third quarter. Bailey O'Shaughnessy is gonna get a screen pass to the right side. He'll push ahead and get himself another first down. One of a few receptions that he would have on the day. Start of the fourth quarter. And a nice little floater there to Bryce Battle to continue the drive for Denver. And another first down conversion here for Bailey O'Shaughnessy. He had himself a pretty good day for 18 carries and 57 yards. 
Then this long pass here to Logan Keel to get the touchdown and give Denver the lead right back. They would go ahead 34 to 30. Now halfway through the fourth quarter, Arizona trying to keep themselves alive. First down here from DJ Moses crossing midfield, going down to the 41. That would be good for a nine yard gain. Then continuing the pressure on fourth down, DJ Moses needs one yard to convert it. He goes to the left, he's got it easily and a little bit more. He would end up getting a six yard run there to keep the drive alive for the Scorpions. But the clock was running down with two and a half to go. From the 16, DJ Moses up the middle again. He continues the drive for the Scorpions with another big first down, keeping the drive alive in the red zone. But the clock ticking down, as you see there, now with two minutes to go. Ashley Jackson looking to throw, gets one down the middle, and it's Will Todd in the end zone for the touchdown. He gets the score and gives the Scorpions the go-ahead lead, waking up that huge monstrosity of Fatality Field. With less than, less than a minute to go then, Bryce Battle on 4th and 24, tried to get the first down, could not get anything going there, and ended up having a turnover on downs. But they would stop the drive, and the punt would be blocked. And we thought perhaps that Denver had the chance to get the ball back, but on further review, here's what happened. Snap is low, punt is blocked, and you see here number 51 of Denver had his hands on the ball and lost it, and that's what constituted the turnover and give Arizona the ball right back. We thought perhaps Denver got it, but no, the change of possession means a new set of downs for the Scorpions, and they didn't have to do much else. They just had to take one more knee and close out that game, and in a bizarre finish, the Scorpions come away with the win over Denver, 37-34. Ethan, it has been nothing but close calls for Denver so far this season. All of their games decided by 14 points or less. And look at this, five out of six decided by six points or less, including both of their wins, each against Sioux Falls and St. Louis, where they won those games only by three. To South Dakota we go, Sioux Falls hosting Atlanta, each team looking to avoid their third loss of the season. This is Kay Marion getting behind the defense getting her Sparrows into plus territory. There was much rejoicing. Big third down here, and they are able to convert on the swing pass there. It's Zastel Black will take the field after this drive stalls out. He is good from 45 yards. Jubilation as Sioux Falls takes a three-point lead. Atlanta now. Bryant Dynasty gets picked off. This Sioux Falls secondary can hang with just about anybody. Dynasty can't believe it. That's Jay Ringgold, who's been having a monster season so far. Look at him cross the field to step in front of Siege Falco and take it away and give the ball back to his offense. G.P. Wells here on the swing pass. He's got a first down. A monster game for G.P. Wells. 18 receptions on the game. The drive would stall out. Black would take the field again, this time for 36 yards. And that is good. The lead is six. Now with just over two minutes to play, Atlanta would need to march down the field, get the touchdown and the extra point. Could they do it? Dynasty throw it to his left. That is caught. His team's in plus territory. They're going to hurry up. They still have two timeouts remaining. Dynasty again, a deep drop. Has time and boot. Chisholm comes up with a huge catch. They use the timeout. Atlanta into the red zone with less than a minute to play. Dynasty, his troops continuing to march. Siege Falco inside the five and he gets out of bounds. That stops the clock with 19 seconds remaining. Dynasty finds the Hall of Famer BDG Hollywood wide open in the left flat. And that would tie the game at 19 apiece. They still need the extra point to take the lead with less than 30 seconds remaining. Another look at the touchdown. Hollywood crossing Hollywood Boulevard. And there's a spoiler for you. The extra point was up and good. Atlanta gets it done on the road, 20 to 19. Baltimore and Queen City had themselves a Monday night special. We'll see who came out on top right after this.
Welcome to the SFL Monday Night Special. Live from Buffalo, New York, it's the 4-0 Baltimore Vultures and the 2-2 Queen City Corsairs. Welcome back to SFL Crunch Time. We open this segment with a special presentation of SFL Game Sound where we bring you original audio from the top matchups of the week. And this being the first of four Monday Night Specials presented by the SFL, a unique presentation of SFL games. This week, it's player cams and player commentary throughout the game. So on the call, Cameron Irvine, T-Roy Gaines, Saron Yates IV, Nathaniel Diggs, and Jorge Torres. Five yard line, and Diggs, you're rushing back out on that field now. The offense turns it over. Uh, there's been a couple games I've, I've had to have uh, the EMTs on standby. Oh, oh Hazard breaking tackles, oh, man, two man. down to the four yard line. Goal line Let's set, stop. third goal of the one. Handoff, Hazard, Hazard. There, there we go. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten of the thirty. Oh, oh, zero oh, breaks oh, attack. Oh, oh, zero oh, breaks oh, another. And zero down to the fifteen-yard line. Oh, a fifteen-yard gain. Caswell, yep, short, go. turns the corner, comma sack oh, down to the one-yard line. Third and five. Caswell Wrong fires back. Oh, good nice. play. Touchdown, Christopher Ochoa. Wrong defense. I say. And there it is. It. Is there out. we go. What a throw, man! Oh my Look goodness! At, oh, no one, man! Look at that! That's a hell of man. that's a hell of a catch, right? He's watching the game from the uh, from the window out of those binoculars. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's. Definitely... Oh, it's picked oh, off! Yes. Oh. Deflected off the shoe. Where did that come from? Oh, he passed. Right, throw different. it, and they're that's going to the end zone. Two it again, Queen City. He Deezer, pal, over the top, we are tied. Come on, Jimmy, get in there. That's a stop. He's in, uh, yes! <laughs> Touchdown, Baltimore. They retake uh. the lead. What a response after Queen City scores back-to-back -back touchdowns. Baltimore back in front. Y'all see uh, uh, that uh, tweet when we were on at a Chili's the other night? The yeah, Denver, I did. Arizona game? That was pretty yes, sweet. Oh, team oh, was oh, oh, It's oh. recovered by yes. Queen City. Let's go. Who calls that? Fumble I thought we it. got it back. I thought we got it back. Nope, no, didn't. Did. Nope. Popped oh, out dang. by Crow. God. I got to do better than that, well, man. We got him right here. Him. Didn't see him out there. 28-yarder, Judah Dorgan. And so Queen City's field goal would make it a three-point game, 23-20. to The onside kick would fail. Baltimore recovers, and the Vultures move to 5-0, and remaining undefeated. They would add a field goal. The final score, Baltimore wins 26-20. to Obviously, the news broke tonight, and I have come here to confirm it, that, yes, this will be T.D. Drew's final game in a Predator uniform. Um, and obviously next week we'll be starting a new quarterback under center. Um, uh, we do have that new guy confirmed on our end. Obviously it stinks that it ends here. You know, we obviously would have wanted it to go on for a little bit longer, but we respect his wishes and we look to improve and look to gain, to grow more and more. Uh, joining us now, once again, the editor in chief of Swamp Talk. And the GM of the Red Hot Louisiana Revolution, Ross Napoli. Ross, thank you for joining us again. How are you, sir? Great. Great to be back, Josh. Thanks for having me again. Uh, our pleasure, as always. Got to ask you about T.D. Drew. Uh, Jack Brown, Charleston Predators owner, confirmed this was his last game this past week for the Preds. I know your ears to the rail on this. What exactly is going on with T.D. Drew? Well, um, T.D. Drew had been reached out to by me uh when he missed the first progression, uh, because we were starting to compile some uh, data for a uh, poll that was was being done by the paper uh, in regards to subscription models. Uh, he then progressed the next week. He responded to it, had some strong words uh, as to the subscription model and what the price was and things of that nature, and uh, had confirmed that this was, in fact, his last season uh, due to that. 
And then uh, two consecutive weeks after that now, you know, he has missed progression. Uh, we see the sub has expired. So uh, I'm under the understanding that the team kind of knew that over the past couple of weeks. So they've been working on that replacement. I've reached out to some people over with the uh, organization. They have confirmed as much. So uh, we will be seeing a new quarterback on the center in Charleston this week. And do you have any insight as to who that is, whether you tell us or not? Because you knew this was coming in advance. Do you know who the new quarterback is going to be? Uh, no, I don't have anything confirmed. I know that there's been a couple of names thrown out uh, there and that there are some guys who have uh, very good experience in this league, some guys who may not have re-signed that uh, are, are in the mix for that. Uh, so I do know that they, they have focused and honed in on one specific person, uh, and that was being worked out over these past, I, I guess, week or two to get everything in motion, knowing what was going on with Drew. So, uh, you know, we're all kind of waiting for the confirmation there, but uh, I do not know that name as of right now. Okay, and it might become public knowledge that after we uh, send this out into the wild, obviously we're taping yeah. on Tuesday here. Now, Ross, you mentioned a survey that you were taking. I would love to hear a little bit more about this, please. Yes. Well, so um, knowing that this was sort of what was going on uh, in the league where quarterbacks and running backs pay more, uh, they have the add on to the subscription, which puts their um, yearly subscription north of $80 a year, right. where everybody else in the league is paying 60 to play every other position. So we went out and, and did a, a basic four question survey, uh, basically asking guys, um, quarterbacks and running backs, should they um want to answer are they comfortable on paying what the subscription was right now uh did it make or break staying in the league um if there was an increase to that since they are already the highest paying uh players in the league right. would that make or break staying in the league and then the last question was should a price increase happen to you guys would you stay and pay it uh would you possibly create a new player and start over again uh, to, to pay the lower price, or would you leave the league altogether? Uh, we have an article being written right now by who I feel is the best sports writer this league has in Matthew Slynn. Um, I forwarded him all of the data. We did get 44 responses of the 50 quarterbacks and running backs in the league. Pretty so good. we have a very good handle on the feeling of a majority of those players and what that meant. Um, not to give too much away, because I really want people to read the article that will be in this week's Swamp Talk on Friday uh, as to how these guys feel. Um, any comments that were made were considered anonymous. They will be in the article uh, as anonymous quarterback, anonymous running back. I had promised that I would not let anybody's name be linked to it because quite a few players were vocal about how they felt about it. And um, there is one key element of that poll that I found very interesting. Um, and it's, it's, it's both sides of the spectrum. Um, a large majority of the people questioned were okay paying what they're paying now. But it sounds like that's it. You know, they will not pay any more than that to stay in at that position. And those other poll questions start to really tighten up and uh, there were a decent amount of people who did respond and say if it got increased uh, that they would leave the league altogether. And obviously where we are right now, one of those gentlemen were T.D. Drew. It'll be something to watch. Also something to watch. Swamp Talk coming out this week. Ross Napoli yes. with Crunch Time almost every week. Ross, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Go away. Up next, we go into the kitchen with Mike St. Green to find out what's sizzling. That's up next on Crunch Time. Welcome back to Crunch Time as we head to Fort Worth, Texas. The Toros looking for their first win of the season. This is not a good step. Josh Rowe with a one-handed interception, and he's going to return this to sender. Amazon will take a return in 30 days. Josh Rowe did it in about nine seconds. And the, the Hyenas pull within seven. Houston on the march once again. Dave Burr in his second season at quarterback for the Hyenas. 
He finds his man to the right side. There would be a penalty, though. And that is going to be a late hit on the quarterback. And that is bad news for a team trying to cling to a one-touchdown lead. Take another look. Clearly, the defender takes two steps. And it's Jabril Curse committing the infraction and giving Houston a free first down. But the drive would stall out, and they would have to settle for a field goal. Sonny J good from 49 yards. And that would put them within four, but they need to get the ball back, and they do. A minute and a half remaining. Burr hit as he's thrown, and that is a big catch, and they will hurry up. Burr again, this time in the spread. Just over a minute remaining, and that is a monster catch over the middle. Outstanding, and they get the timeout as well. DR Sim, the Hall of Famer, getting it done. Another reception. Inching closer to the end zone. Clock continues to run. Now less than 30 seconds remaining. And Houston does need a touchdown here. It's tipped and intercepted. That's Delaney Nash coming up with a pick in the red zone. Fort Worth wins their first game of the year. 20 to 16, the final. Jacksonville getting ready for their close up in SoCal. Facing the Lycans. All the talk about the Federal Bureau of Interceptions. What about Rochelle Colston, who's been getting it done all year? Gets the interception, and she's going to walk this back into the end zone. The first of two picks on the day, and here comes number two, a leaping grab in a game where Robert Johnson had over 150 yards, and Sully Richardson threw for three touchdown passes. Here's Robert Johnson right there, trucking defenders on his way to the house. It was a beatdown in L.A., 45-16. Now it's time to step back into the kitchen and find out what's sizzling. Once again, we are joined by Mike St. Green, SFL studio analyst, London wide receiver. Mike, great to see you again. Hey, good to be back on with you, Josh. I'm looking forward to cooking once again. Once again, and let's find out who is ready, who's been cooking, who's ready to come out of the oven, who's ready to go. Well, who's been cooking and who's basically finished and ready to serve are the Baltimore Vultures. I mean, this team, uh, as everyone knows, defending champs, uh, they've got 20 and one, I think, out of the last uh, 21 regular season games. Uh, this, they, they've just been phenomenal, uh, Josh, and uh, they can beat you at any facet of the game. They can beat you in a high-scoring game. They can just blow you out, or as we can see this past weekend, uh, they can just play a tough, tight game with you and, and grind it out and, and, and pull one out at the end. And this is just a complete team, and it's really not even close for who's in second. And anyway, as we saw early in that game, every ball bouncing Baltimore's way right now. They really are a team to beat. Who's not quite ready? Who needs another couple minutes in the oven? Who's who's still cooking right now, Mike? Well, who needs a, I, they're, they're ready for prime time, I think, Josh. I think they're ready for the playoffs. And, uh, and But... This, I want to see a little bit more. I want to see them cook a little bit uh, longer. Uh, the Louisiana Revolution, they've been playing great football to start this season off. They're going into the bye week uh, after the big victory uh, this weekend. They're 4-2. and two. They look like a playoff team. Uh, uh, Otis Boudreaux, has been, you know, he carried them a, a week ago uh, with the seven field goals. He started off hot again this week with four field goals, but then the defense stepped up. Uh, uh, pick six from Dante Grimm. Uh, Randy Squarebush had a touchdown run, but the defense has have been, they've been playing well, keeping this team in games, keeping them close, and they've been doing enough to win, but they, it's just something seems special about the revolution right now, but I, I, I do want to see a little more, but I, I think they're almost there. They're a very young team, but they are solid on both sides of the ball, as you said. And speaking of young, let's get into some fresh ingredients. Mike, who is your fresh ingredient for week six? Right now, uh, Josh, this is the freshest of fresh ingredients. Uh, Eric Price, the second season quarterback for the Denver Nightwings, he's been on fire this season. 16 touchdown passes, second in the league. He is the fresh ingredient for this week. You know, and I love to watch Eric Price. He is a gunslinger, and he's had some, some high interception games, but there have been times where he's buckled down and played very solid as well. All right, let's get into somebody who might be – Looking for flavor. Somebody needs a bit of seasoning. Who do you have in mind for that, Mike? I hate to say it, uh, Josh, but it's my hometown team, the Houston Hyenas. They uh, have been right there on the cusp. They've been ahead in games and, and they, you know, losing the second half. They've been right there to win games late that they were coming back in but fell a little short. Uh, the defense have really played pretty 
good. They're right in the middle of the pack with 126 points uh, given up on the season. But right now, they're struggling offensively. Only 105 points on the season for the Hyenas, which is next to last in the league. That Once they get that offense going, I think we'll see more of the Houston Hyenas. I would happen to think so as well, Mike. I'm kind of relieved we didn't get any salt or <laughs> habanero sauce on your computer this week. Maybe we'll try a little harder next time. Mike St. Green, thank you once again, sir. Hey, no problem, Josh. Coming up after the break, it was a bad day to be a quarterback in St. Louis. How come? Well, you'll find out. More crunch time right after this. Over to the East for a divisional matchup between Tulsa and St. Louis. Doug Brown on his first carry of the game. He is already gone to the house for 61 yards into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. What a great run there to start. He would have 28 attempts for 134. That 61 being the biggest one. Then Eagle Mondavi here in the third quarter gets himself a touchdown to bring themselves closer to the Tulsa lead, they would trail 24 to 10. And the start of the fourth quarter, it was a bad day to be a quarterback. JQ getting intercepted here by Colin Douglas, helping St. Louis get back into the ball game. Yeah, JQ was not having a good day. But right afterwards, the very next play, Christian Brown, he's picked off right back by Ricky Thornton. There would be a total of six interceptions on the day between both quarterbacks. JQ responsible for two of them. Christian Brown responsible for four. We'll take a look at this Thornton pick again. He just got right in front of the route. Got in front of the receiver. I believe that, yeah, then, yeah that was Phil Causey, the intended target. And just got in front of it and managed to take care of it. Then only two plays later on third and seven, JQ throws the deep ball down the middle. He's picked off by Nicholas Warner. Five plays, ending up in three interceptions. It was just, it was a bad time to be a quarterback. And you saw that just jumping right in front of that route. But it all culminated to this. Christian Brown picked off again. This was his final pick of the day, and it was the worst one he could have had. Daniel Wright takes it all the way to the house for a pick six. A fantastic performance from both defenses. But, oh, my goodness, yeah, you see there, he jumped right in front of the route, grabbed it. He had nobody around him. He was gone. Tulsa would end up taking this matchup. They've won three of their last four, 31-17. Two of the traditional powers in the SFL squaring off Florida, facing Vancouver. And here's a big interception to get things started. Mark Lopez, but he puts it on the ground. Fortunately, Drew Hamilton is there to recover to preserve the turnover for Vancouver. And after that, the Legion would get to work. Captain Canada, Tom Pepper, finds Brett Killian, and Brett Killian is going to find the red zone, and he's going to find the end zone after breaking that tackle there. BK12 getting it done, running down the right sideline. And this is just a nifty little move. Nice jump. Beats one defender. Beats another defender. One more to go. I could beat that guy too. Big money reception for Brett Killian. He finished the game with eight catches, 217 yards, and two touchdowns. My goodness, Brad, save some for the rest of your team. Like this guy, Robert Redford, the natural, coming through in short yardage there to preserve the drive. And here she is, Kendra Hall, up the middle. And, of course, she's going to get a touchdown in this game. Hall finished the game with only 52 yards, but did have a score there. And successfully revived that ball. That ball came back to life, folks. Vancouver on the drive again. And this one is unfortunately picked off by Andrew Francis. Or fortunately, if you happen to be a Florida Storm fan, take another look at it. Playing deep half. Francis patrolling and making a leaping grab. And was not ruled down, so decided to go and return it. Pr prudent move by him. Charlie Boletsky up the left side. He is Gonzo. What a day he had. 144 yards and three touchdowns. And that coupled with 58 yards in the air. A 200-yard day from scrimmage for the bullet. Getting some big blocks there on the left side. And then his speed just does the rest. 
the extra point would make it a 24-24 game. But Vancouver came out on top, 41-24. Still to come on Crunch Time, Mike St. Green comes back to do the grid and game balls. More Crunch Time after this. Who wants some more tax max We'll have Lone Star at Mexico City. Here late in the fourth quarter, Ike McBride, she walks into the end zone wide open for the touchdown. That would give Lone Star the 28-21 lead. With a minute to go here in the fourth quarter, Matt Wilson trying to throw it out here, but it's incomplete. Intended there for Jason Bartley. That would bring up fourth down and eight. The five wide receivers, Wilson from the shotgun to keep the Aztec drive alive. Would throw here to the right side, caught by McCall to get the first down. Matt Wilson did not have himself a good day in terms of turnovers, had three interceptions, but that was a good reception there. Then later on, with a minute to go, a big shot there to the orange Darby to keep the drive alive. Then at the next play, Bartley to the left side. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. They would kick the extra point, and we would tie it up at 28. And then with three seconds to go, Lone Star trying to hail Mary their way to a win. A deep ball down to the end zone. It's caught, but it's by the other team. It would end up being an interception by Dorian Locke. And we would be going to overtime. Remember, in the SFL, overtime is sudden death. First score, and it's over. There is no ties in this league. So going into overtime, Mexico City would get the ball. Wilson with a throw down the middle of Mike Daggs. That would keep the drive going. It's good for a first down. Brings it to the 27-yard line. They're pretty much in field goal range. But Phoenix Jones says, you know what? I'm going to make it a little easier for my kicker. He brings it down to the 12-yard line. And that would set up for the field goal. From 28 yards out, the kick is up. It is good. Mexico City would win a squeaker in overtime. They're now 3-3. Three and three. Lone Star getting their second loss of the season. With the Aztecs coming out on top, 31-28. Las Vegas visiting Louisiana, heading to the Swamp. This is Cameron Collier up the middle. The fullback getting a touchdown. Vulturing from Colin Hart and Randy Squarebush. Do we have a three-headed running back monster in Louisiana? Maybe so. On a later Revs possession, this is Tommy Utah in the middle of the fourth quarter. That is tipped and intercepted. Nikki Colantrelli coming up with the ball and getting the Fury in great field position already at field goal range. And they would march down even further. Joseph Green complete to make it first and goal. And then up the middle, Skojo gets a touchdown of his own. Scott Johnson still getting it done. Finished the game right around 100 yards with that touchdown. And now here comes Colin Hart running for his sees Cameron Collier scoring and trying to preserve his own volume. And then after the two-minute warning, this is B-Robo getting it close, and then third and inches, and then they punch it in one more time. Randy Squarebush this time. There's plenty of touchdowns to go around for all the running backs in Louisiana. Right up the middle, just like that. Going to be a five-point lead for the Revs, and then here comes an interception. Dante Grimm, the rookie, his first career interception, and he's got a convoy. Mike Ryan leading the way to the end zone for Dante Grimm. Double pump fake on the spike and slams it home to ice the game for Louisiana. One more look at it, and you see it tipped. And the rookie's in the right place at the right time. Goes 70-plus yards for his first career pick six. Revs on top, 33-21, to their third win in a row. More crunch time coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere. DC undefeated and heading into week six, facing one. And this is Lauren Percoco running a slant over the middle. That touchdown would tie the game at 30 apiece late in the fourth. Less than a minute and a half remaining. They need the extra point to take the lead. Spot is down. Kick is up. It is good. 
and DC has the bare minimum lead for trying to go 6-0. But Johnny Pickler not done, finds Finn Kalia, who already had two touchdowns, breaks a tackle, and is going to make it three. 200 yards plus through the air for Vin Calia. He has conquered Washington. Three touchdowns. And take another look at it here. It was a monster day through the air for London. Mike St. Green also hit the century mark and found the end zone. But it was Calia doing the, the heavy work. And then to get the two-point conversion, Robert Merrill stick him up. It's a seven-point lead now. DC needs to answer. Shabazz Synergy does. Completing over the middle to plus territory using a timeout. Now, nine seconds remaining. And there's another completion. But Jeff Banfield cannot get out of bounds. I got to use a timeout. DC out of timeouts now. They completed it over the middle inside the 10. But time expires. And DC falls to London 38 to 31. Some of the Charleston, where the San Diego Mavericks are trying to go to 4-1 and one on the season. Scar Patterson here in the third quarter. Big bomb to Gunnar Lewis. He will take it to the house for a 62-yard score. That would narrow the deficit for the Mavericks to just three points. They would trail Charleston 23-20 to following this score. And you saw there just had plenty of room to run. Could not get caught. We'll take a look at another look at that catch. Yeah, just right through the seams. So now uh, down by three, Patterson going to throw a bomb here to Liam Hammer. Gets him inside the red zone. That would be one of Liam Hammer's five receptions on the day for 151 yards. Look at that deep bomb. Beautiful catch there. That would go for 67 yards on in the air and just a phenomenal reception. Then it would go down to... Go down to Jalen Wells, keeping the drive alive, going down to goal to go, but the goal line stand would hold for Charleston, and Alec Finley would have to settle for a field goal, and that would tie it up at 23 apiece. Finley going three for three on the day with his longest at 48. Into the fourth quarter now, and TD Drew, who is playing his final game as a Charleston Predator, getting the big pass there keeping that drive alive. Now at the San Diego 35, Drew's going to throw to the right side here. It's complete to Ken Maccaro. It's the first down and closing in on the red zone. Now with about nine and a half to go, Swearingen goes to the right side. He separates and he is gone into the end zone for the touchdown. Or so we thought. They would actually go into the review. Looking at it again, you see the spin move there. Watch here. The tackle, the knee comes down before the ball crosses the plane. And they said that he did not score. So they would then be first and goal to go at the goal line. But the very next play, Swearingen, left side, you can't stop him. He's into the end zone. Charleston would retake the lead, 30-23. Now with eight and a half to go, Patterson trying to get San Diego back in the ball game. It's a huge pass to Liam Hammer, who cuts around with two spins. He's almost gone to the house, but gets stopped at the six-yard line for a goal to go. San Diego looks to get back into this, but Corey Manor says, uh, nah, uh no, nah, you ain't taking that. And that keeps the lead for Charleston. They would hold on to win it 30 to 23. Once again, it's time to play the grid. Each player has $12 to purchase a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and a flex spot. Playing today from the London Knights, Chad Rowland and Mike St. Green. And uh, Mr. St. Green, you uh, have the honor, sir. All right. Um, I'm going to play the grid probably like I would build a team of my own. Uh, money ball type thing, right? Uh mm -hmm. First pick is going to be Marcus Dunhill. Mm. I like that. He's, he's former MVP, but hey, two bucks on Marcus Dunhill. Who can pass that up? You know, when we put him at two bucks, it was like he was having a rough game, but I felt like, you know, there's always some bargains down there. I think he's a pretty good one, Chad. What do you think? I mean, that's not bad. I think, I mean, Marcus Dunhill for two bucks. I mean, he does, if I remember correctly, he's like in the top two or three in interceptions. So uh, I don't remember if, uh, if you get negative points for interceptions in this, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot to think about. Um, but yeah, that's not a bad choice for two bucks. 
All right. Uh, who do you got, Chad? Oh, man, that's that's a million-dollar question. Um, you know what? I I am actually going to go a little heavy here. Um, I am going to go Shabazz Synergy Ooh, all right. at $4. You know, DC has been playing really well. I mean, yes, we, they just lost to the Knights, but, you know, Synergy played a pretty decent game, and uh, they're going up against Queen City. So, you know, they're a little down this year on the defensive-wise, so I'm, I'm going to go and try to get some points. So I'm going to go Synergy. Like yeah, that's that's a good that's a good pickup, Chad. Uh, he's been having a great season. Uh, even had, he had a solid game against London last week as well. So, uh, great pickup. Um, look, there's no sense in me being on the grid and seeing a name that's up there, and me not taking that name. I got to go with Mike St. Green. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, what, what would be the point of me being here if I didn't take myself? That's a very good point. Very good point. And that's a, you're you're at a bargain too at four bucks, I'd say. Hey, I, I should have been six, but I don't. You know, I don't. I don't make up the game. So. <laughs> I'm his coach. I would have made him ten bucks, but that's just me. Excellent, Chad. It's your pick. Excellent pick, Mike Say Green. Excellent pick. Um. Uh, man, I got, so I am going to go, I'm going to stay in that same game that I went in and I'm going to take jet zero for two bucks. Uh, jet, you know, has had an up and down season. I think he's had some really good games. He had some games that got stuffed, but, uh, DC's defense, I think with that front line, I mean, they're getting better, but the run game wise, I think that they're vulnerable to that. And I think he's going to rack up a few points, especially being a power back. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go zero there. That's a, that's a solid pick, but, uh, you know, Zero's been struggling a little bit, even though they geared up uh, to run the ball this season. Uh, I was, I'm kind of surprised to see him struggle as much as he has. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the, My, guys, the guys, I'm sorry to cut you off, I think the guys that are, you know, in these $3, $2 weights, they're not bad players. They're good players that have just had some consistency issues. That's all. I think Jet Zero yeah. definitely qualifies for that, Mike. Oh, no, no, there's no doubt about it. I mean, he's an excellent back, but just struggling a little bit coming out the gate as far as uh, the numbers we're accustomed uh, to seeing from Jet. Um, I, I got to go. I got to spend a little money this time, and, and we're going to go with a quality guy and one of the better players in this league, and uh, Scott Johnson, running back from uh, Las Vegas. Solid Good pick. Thing. He was in uh, – he had a strong couple of weeks – to start the season as much as anybody. I mean, he was red hot. It's cooled off a little bit, but, uh, you know, still the same player. He didn't just start sucking for like two weeks. He's been good. It's had a hundred yard game this past week. Oh yeah. Scott, Scott Johnson is a hundred yard machine. So uh, yeah, it's hard to overlook that guy. Correct. Chad, you have six bucks left. What are you thinking? Six dollars, man. Um, Let's see here. So my thinking is with this, I've already got the running back. I need to go get myself a wide receiver. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Jason Bartley. Um, you know, a guy coming from Mexico city, you know, it's, it's a really pass happy offense. Um, and you know, Matt Wilson has been throwing the ball a lot this season. He's, he's leading the league in yards and, who better than to go get that than uh, Jason Barley? I think he's going to have a big game. Mr. St. Green, you are down to your last $2, but it's a flex spot. You can get anybody you want. Yeah, Josh, I was going to say my hood math tells me that I have about two bucks left. So, <laughs> uh, and I need a flex position, and this guy can put up numbers. Uh, you know, not great numbers, but he puts up solid numbers uh, from any given game and any given week. I got to go with Will Todd. Yeah. Good pick. Very strong game this past weekend. And Chad, you uh, you saved a little bit. You've got three dollars left. How are you yeah. going to round out your team? You're also looking for a flex. Yeah. So looking for a flex. Um, it almost pains me to say this, just because of the fact that I usually have beefs with this guy, and I'm always battling this guy in, in many different aspects of life. But I got to go Eagle Mondavi. Um, 
<laughs> you know, you know, them going up against Arizona, Arizona's been, you know, looking a little weaker, I think, at the defense this season. I, Eddie's going to hate me for saying that, but um, I think Eagle's going to have a big game, and, and I think that that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good selection, I think. I think yeah, so. that, that is a solid pick. Uh, yeah, that Arizona secondary, they've been struggling. Uh, they did come up with a victory against Denver this past weekend, but uh, it wasn't because Denver didn't put up points, that's for sure. Yeah, correct. Guys, outstanding stuff. We've got two good teams here. And both the, and you both stayed in budget. So great great job on running the grid. Hey, don't head off just yet. Cam and Mike have game balls coming up. More crunch time right after this. Game balls for week six. Mike start us off. Corey Minner, uh, he gets my first game ball, three interceptions and a fumble recovery, including one huge interception in the end, end zone that stopped a uh, San Diego Maverick drive. Corey Minner with the first game ball. I'm going to stick on the defensive side, Mike, and I'm going to give it to the entire Tulsa Desperados defense. Christian Brown threw 71 times and 15 passes were deflected by eight different Tulsa defenders. That whole defense, it's hard to give it to just one person. They get my game ball. Well, I'm going to stay on the defensive side as well, Cam. We it looked like a defensive week. Uh, Dante Grimm uh, with the Louisiana Revolution. He had a pick six to close out there. Dante Grimm gets my second game ball. Um, I honorable mention to Robert Johnson because he had a great game, but I got to give it to your boy, Johnny Pickler. 534 yards he averaged over 10 yards an attempt four touchdowns what really happened mike was london exposed dc's only weakness which seems to be pass defense they just they just can't stop things deep down the field uh london took advantage of that they got a huge one on the road and an upset a previously unbeaten team how can you not give it to johnny he had an awesome week gets my game ball and he was finding his uh, big target, Ben Callier, all game long, and his well-deserving game ball for uh, my teammate, Johnny Pippen. For Ethan Muslin and all of our Crunch Time contributors, I'm Josh Circle. Till next time, we will see you on the internet. Keep on crunching.